Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Thursday the 14th of April. We're looking at the Dow having an early big spike. It was weak earlier on, then it had a big spike. We're up to the 34,889 level. That is really nice action. It's just a pity it couldn't stay there because if it did, you'd start to get the pattern that I talk about that changes from uh, a declining cone like this expanding cone and starts to form a base to break and change into a cup formation so it breaks that trend line but it's broken the trend line but it hasn't held and that's really important not a lot of selling going on i there's a lot there is a lot going on what i was talking about when i did my webinar for subscribers last time and thank you to all of those that came I know a number of you said that you'll You'll come. Uh, you'll, you'll do it a little later. You couldn't do it at that time. I appreciate that. What I'm really looking at here, which I think is really, really important, and th that is within the patterns that we're looking at, the stalling formation. You can see it in the weekly chart. Yes, it was a fabulous run from the low of January, uh, January, February lows uh, in the in the down the S and P and the other indices. And it's holding in the higher range, which is kind of in a midpoint between the higher, in this case, uh, close to 37,000 the Dow, January the 5th, down to 32,000, just over 32,000. And now back into the 34,700 area it was in 34,800. So that this is good. If you look at the week, monthly chart, and now we're in almost the midpoint of the month, also very good. But I don't like these sudden sell-offs. I don't like all of the sell-offs that we've seen most of the week. Every rally couldn't be held. Certainly the Dow is holding a lot better than the S&P, up 103 right now, up 0.3%. The S&P is down 0.44%, down 19 at 4427 this is not good. Getting closer and closer to test again, test that 200 period moving average of 44.10. Not happy about that at all. I want to see the two leading. Uh, well, I'd like to see all three, but you're not going to get the Nasdaq uh, doing anything really spectacular just yet. It needs more time. But certainly the Dow is the better one now. Mentioned in the den, uh, Nick, Nike, uh, sports, uh, Nike B shares, sports and sportswear. I'm um, doing very nicely today, up almost 3%, up 377 at 131. That is definitely helping the Dow. Very choppy action. But that month, the weekly chart is in a sell mode. The monthly is in a sell mode. I can just think of this as a consolidation phase. Let's go on. We want to look at the QQQ, the NDX 100, down 4.5 at 341.80. Hmm, not good at all. Not good at, 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 at all. It should have filled this gap yesterday, and today should have been up in the 352 area and said it's, it's 10 points low at 340, 342. I, I don't like that. Uh, one of the reasons why for subscribers to have opened call, we've been raising cash, but we're also putting money to work. But, but the money is going to really specific areas. Um, they just, in a, I wouldn't say in a way they're different to what I've done most of the last couple of years um, altogether. But the bulk is in very different areas, a lot in the commodity-related area. So let me just go on with this. I wanted to show you something that I thought was quite quite fascinating. First, we'll do the IWM, the Russell 2000. Holding okay, pulling back 44 cents at 200. Uh, a little bit better off its low of four days ago. But underneath the 14-period uh, moving average, which hasn't turned positive yet, I just this is really an, um, it's just stuck. Gold, as I said before in the in the update, uh, this is a 10 o'clock update at 1968 down 16. The last day of the week is often where a lot of gold selling comes in, holding very nicely. But if you look, so last night I spent quite some time. And I'll do this right now. I want to show you a particular pattern that you can use. Everyone can use it. What I did last night for subscribers, a lot of it I said was going to be a visual representation 
of what many people look at mathematically or in a scientific way. But for me, I came to this as a visual artist. Um, I just, I look at things visually. So I've been looking, and I mentioned this the other day, remember at nine o'clock, three, I think it was three days ago, the market started a huge rally, and, um, and it, it was really a spectacular rally uh, right there. It went all the way to uh, around, around about 44.50, and then it pulled back, and at 10 o'clock when I did the update just before the show, I said, have a look at this. The technicals here, the MACD stochastic, this is one of the only reasons why I need to have some of these technicals. I only need them when I need them. Uh, was that it was strong, but the right side tested 10 o'clock Eastern time with a slightly higher high at uh, on the 12th of April at 44.66.75 was much weaker. Well, that turned out to be the high of the day. It plunged down to the 43.78, was it? 75.50 area at 15.30. So that's what's at uh, um, two minutes. That's, 30 minutes past two, and then it ran and ran. You see the pink line, it went negative, then it went on the green line and ran uh, a couple of times into buy modes, one one peak D, and then it got, uh, it got um, an alternate count, pulls back, and then it made a high the very next day. Uh, we, it made a high on the 13th at 2 o'clock at 44.28. This is the S&P E-mini, 10-minute chart. And then what happened is, it pulled back, ran up again to a peak D. Remember, D is really important in the Chapman methodology. That's where other things can happen. And what happens? It was way weaker. And then it pulled back, and then that was the high of the day. And the next morning at 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock on the 13th. When is 9 o'clock on the 13th? Why, that's today. Sorry, that was yesterday. Yesterday. It starts to rally very strongly. And then what happened was at about 1.30 to 2 o'clock, it goes to a peak D, and look at the technicals, the MACD, stochastic, and look what happened. It still kept running because the nine period moving average was still way positive. It went continued higher to the doji candle high of the day, which is at uh, 44, 49.50 at 15.50. So that was, uh, was that 3.50? And then what happens? It pulls back, and what I'd say to subscribers when I did my webinar at four, I said, look, this is holding very well. This, oh, I forgot to put it in. This is strong, strong, but this is also strong. So I said, we could see a, 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 we could see a nice move sideways for a while before there's a pullback. Lo and behold, we, did, we had a really good rally, and then we had these two at one o'clock last night and two o'clock in the morning, you saw these two. This was strong and this started to weaken. So the reason why I'm spending some time on this is because we're all about education here at TFNN. Um, the technicals here are just a little bit weaker, just I'll, I'll say slightly weaker. Well, Look what happened. <coughs> it pulled back, and then it had this big spike. I call it the Eiffel Tower. Spike up to this leg A, and then it became an A minus because at 9.30, you often get an economic report at 8.30 sometimes, and you get the big spike up, and it fails immediately. It looks like uppercase A. It's an A minus. Now, why am I doing this? Because when we get back, I'm going to show you what's happening. In Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back, Dow's up 118, s and down 20. The reason why I want to take just a moment uh, to show you that particular uh, technique that I've developed over the years, the vertical, uh, the vertical, you grading vertically the, uh, the, the power. Look at this. Something else I spent some time on last night in the webinar, and you can sign up for the webinar for for my you'll get my newsletter and you get the, get the webinar. We've actually had some very nice positions over the last couple of days that people have been signing up for. I like to measure what's happened, even if it's a long period of time from 2011 September in the gold contract. Look, if I put a vertical line right here at the high, it was made right there. That was uh, July, August or so, maybe it's uh, September. Yeah, September. September of 2011. Look at the technicals. The MACD was good. The stochastic had already started turning down. On balance volume, the blue line, let me just change this to a pointer. The blue line was becoming overbought but hadn't yet become overbought. It did on that retest um, a little later, about, about a year later. And then what happened is it started to pull back sharply. Now look what's happened. You've got a vertical line here, and that is, I had it all notated, I'll have to do it again. That is in the gold continuous contract, and that was the high of also in the fall, that was August, I believe, yeah, August of 2020, 2118 was the high. Uh, this is a moving average that, that, that changes, gets smoothed out. The previous one was 2147. I just, it's, it's, it's beyond comprehension. I understand it on my own way, not in a mathematical way, but it's beyond comprehension that you can go for 11 years, 10 to 11 years, plunge down from the 22s to the 1470 level, and then come all the way back a beautiful left side, right side price time match. Look at the midpoint. This little doji candle spoke about it last night. How it's about four or five candles that I use all the time, but that's all. So, yeah, there are people that use candles for every, every. They say if it's this particular thing, then expect in two days or three days. And it just hardly ever happens if you read Socks and Commodities magazine when they do all the tests of these different uh, uh, technical indicators. Um, candlesticks, uh, you know, the candles themselves, there are certain ones that I have a rule with, certainly the Chapman Roman candle. It's a phenomenal 
uh, technique that's still active, I'm afraid to say, for the uh, S&P, having the second month after the high, the first month after the high, a Roman candle, we'll get to that. But look, the MACD is strong, stochastic was strong, and almost immediately they've started turning down. The difference is that in this particular scenario right here, this is a monthly chart, there was a retest, and that retest was a lot lower, and the technicals were very weak back in July or so of 2012. In this particular instance, if you do the vertical assessment, you can say forget about that one. What are we doing now in this leg C, in the uh, new leg C, in the monthly chart? And you can see right here that the MACD, it, it, this, is, this has just turned positive. That just says it's a big deal for the MACD to have pulled back so, for so long and then found the temerity to see the histogram go from the 0% line from negative to green. So that says there's internal buying. That's the way I like to look at it. That's based on the MACD. The stochastic has gone all the way to about 23% and is now 61% and rising. The on-balance volume. So I love to compare FX and EFX to one another. What was the effect of going to the peak F top September of 2011? What was the result of the MACD and stochastic in the period going after that? And what's the what's happening right now? And you can see that yes, in the den, good eye. It's a it's a huge bowl or cup and handle. One of my least favorite patterns. Uh, why? Because this handle usually says in my work that it can go above the previous high and then come back and do some retesting. My favorite is the is the Chapman wave cup and ladle formation. And that says underneath the previous high of D, E, or F, there's a new buy signal that's gone to a buy mode. That's in now the monthly chart in the, in the gold contract is in a buy mode because the MACD finally crossed positive. Look, the green line above the 14, it's kind of messy, isn't it? Let me get rid of this. I don't like too many of these. Um, is positive. And look what we've got. We've got a peak C. And that says in the Chapman wave, if there is a powerful move in this particular bar that goes sharply above the left side high in a shorter time frame in the cup formation to a midpoint, in this case it's already there, that becomes a Chapman wave overlapping wave. And that says not only do you go to leg C, it has to go close above this previous high. That's the high in the continuous contract of the August of 2020, uh, 2118.3. The price will change when it gets smoothed out, but that is everything else is the same. If it goes sharply above that, starts to actually close on a weekly basis, but it really has to be on a monthly basis, above 21.52, then you can expect, yes, there could be a pullback to retest the previous lip high that was at peak E um, of August of 2020, but it should go to at least a D. So one of the things about the cup and ladle is that this little mini, this is the huge cup and handle. I don't like those. But the cup and ladle is forming its own potential Chapman Wave cup and ladle. So cup and handle, not my favorite. Cup and ladle, one of the most powerful moves that you can find because it says you've gone above the previous high in less than a D. If it's at a C, you expect the C to go at least to, at least to a D. So I wanted to show you the vertical aspect of, of it, analyzing is almost as important as the horizontal one. All right, enough with that. Exxon was mentioned. Exxon is trading at um, uh, 87.23. I showed this in my webinar last night. The large rectangle formation is different to the narrow rectangle formation. The large one says you can form a, a big rectangle making a lopsided gravy cup, not a regular cup, but a gravy cup because the midpoint isn't the midpoint. It's actually either on the left side or the right side. And then if it starts to make high highs and higher lows after the flagpole breakdown at a D or an E or an F, you can expect 
a rally in that, it, I always used to say in a shorter time span, we've seen it happen for the last year so many times in the same time span, that in the same time span, you can see a rally that should take the price either to just under, right on, or just above the previous peak, that was in this case the high, the, the, this is the flagpole high, at a peak D in ExxonMobil on the 8th of March at 91.51. But if it fails at a peak D underneath the previous D, be careful because the two fighting patterns of the cup and the arch are going to be in place. So this is a leg D. I suspect that we are getting really close in the oil sector. It's just some kind of a di digestive phase. And that applies to CVS, it's actually gone, CVX that is, done the same thing, gone to a leg E underneath the previous high. That's the rule of thumb is fantastic here. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back at Dow's up on the S&P is coming back a little bit, just down, just down 18. Let's go to our first caller. Maybe he's, not, he's the last caller, but he's certainly the first one of the day. Greg in Austin, Texas. Greg, how are you? I'm well, Basil. How are you today? I'm very well. You'd like to look at Alcoa? No, sir. Uh, American Airlines, AAL. Oh, oh, uh, AAL. All right. Just as you're yeah. saying it, let me just say that Alcoa is actually acting very well and it's got a peak C in the weekly. It should go to a leg D over 98.09 in the next couple of weeks. Let's go to AAL. So I've got AAL right, American Airways Group. Oh, I haven't finished the notation on this one. 
Um, I did a left side. Oh, isn't that interesting? We were just talking about this very thing. I've got this um, American Airlines back in, uh, let me give you the number. This is on the week of 19th of March, 2021, hit 26.09. And uh, it makes a cup formation. And on the 4th of June of 2021, it hits 26.04, five cents lower. But look at the tech, this exact technique. I, I can't remember why it was there. I, I, I remember doing it at the time, but I, I'd forgotten that it was there. Um, look, this is the same thing I've just been talking about from the left right. side, which is strong, and the right side, which is weak. And then it came tumbling down. There was the high in the 26s. It ran down to a low in the 12s. And it's trading right now at 19. So why are you going to tell me what you're, what you're looking at, what your plan is? I'm just going to do the notation. Fire away. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I have to admit, I was coattailing off of you. You talked about six flags multiple times and saw that the airlines were doing actually really well compared to the IYT. So um, I've actually owned it twice here in the last, uh, I don't know, two weeks or so. And... My my question is, but after just listening to you this morning, I, I, I'm thinking that it's not um, in a leg uh, G rogue wave. But that was my question: is is it uh, a rogue wave G? And um, if it isn't, maybe you could just go over a rogue wave and why that may not be. Um, if you don't mind to help me understand it, a rogue wave more technically. Oh, okay. Um, so what? Yeah. So I, that's a fabulous question, and it's absolutely pertinent to what we're looking at right now. So let me give you. Um, ex oh gosh, I had the, I have dozens of them written down. I just don't have it in front of me, and I've just done so many hundreds of charts over the last few weeks preparing for last night that. Um, there's a difference between a right arm extension and a rogue wave. And basically, oh, you know what? I'll find, I don't want to talk about it, then make one up. Let me over the weekend, I'll, I've got them all written down. I just don't have it in front of me right now. Sure. But let me do that. And basically what a rogue wave does is, as you're going to recovery highs, usually it's actually neither all-time highs or highs that are, You've been coming down for a long time. All the technicals appear to show that you're correct in being short. And then out of the blue, this is this one spike. It's just a real rogue wave. This is one spike that comes from nowhere. And that single bar, it looks very much like we're doing right now, but it's usually one bar and it screams above the left side high. But Usually we've been going down for a little bit longer because you are, in fact, in a sell mode in that time frame. And everything says you're 100% correct. But suddenly Elon Musk makes an offer or whatever it is, or it comes out with an earnings and it has a sudden spike. And what happens is the people who are short, the price lasts just long enough to go over that previous major high on the left side. For them to say, oh, my, I knew mm -hmm. I shouldn't have shorted. Covered. What a crazy, this is, a, uh, and they cover the shorts, and the people who are long say, I knew I shouldn't have taken profits. I should have stayed, in what, what am I doing? I've got to get back some of it. And the price lasts just long enough to get both the shorts and the longs trapped. And then the very same bar or the next bar plunges and within like two bars sometimes you are back to where you were before this whole incident that's a real road wave just exactly what happens in the ocean when suddenly there's mm -hmm. a 60 or 90 foot wave that just springs up and then it's just gone so that's the road mm -hmm. the right arm extension says that the tacticals were actually improving one of them at least the MACD or the stochastic to allow it to have a, 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 a steady move up that had the single leg up that just failed completely. That is a little different. Oh, oh, oh. Let me do this. In a sense, this move right here in the five minute chart in the e mini this morning, that could have been called a rogue wave right there. This is, let me open this up because everything was going down. This is, exa this is a rogue wave. Perfect. Good. We got our example on the, uh, we'll use the 10 minute chart. That's fine. Look, 
the technicals were all failing. The nine period was under the 14 period. The MACD was weak. The stochastic was weak. It went to a low. Uh, maybe it isn't because it had too many bars. But it, you would see it better on. Yeah, no, this is this is too many bars. But it has the same characteristic that at uh, nine ten this morning, if you were short, you were fine. You were right. That was everything was weak. And then suddenly there was this, this explosive move, and it gives it all back. And the, as it gives it back within two bars, it's back or below where it was. It's pretty much like a rogue mm -hmm. wave. So I've got that out the way, and I have a nice opportunity to explain it. Good. But this one here, it's above the 200 period moving average. The nine period moving average is over the 14. The MACD made an M-shaped pattern, so that's still very good, and it's gone plus. The stochastic is the one-week link. The on-balance volume is good. So this says to me, no, this is a move in um, American Airlines that you have to consider it is overbought in a very short term. If I went to, say, the 120-minute chart, you can see it's just a leg B. But that's not the point. The point is that the technicals in the time frame that we're looking at are still very good. Then I immediately go to the next time frame, which is the uh, weekly chart. And then it says, wow, finally the MACDs turned up. Finally the stochastics at 69, getting towards the 80%. You've got the V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. The, it, the nine hasn't yet crossed positive, but we've got a down channel with a Chapman wave inside wedge. So you can see mm -hmm. I'm using different right, time yeah. frames. And that's, I don't know if you can see it live. Can you see it on your? Right, yeah. um, yes, I can. Great. So look at this. So I've got the Chapman Wave inside track besides the down channel. We've got the inside track repellent zone so far. And it's a Friday, except it's Thursday. It's the last day of the week. And so far, the candle is really good. So every other time it's tried to break above the trend line and it's failed. This time it has. So trying to put the whole picture together. What I'm going to say to you is I did the same work earlier on on Delta. And Delta has also skyrocketed and it's got a gap up to a peak D. The last, uh, to a leg D, the last peak D that was made in Delta was uh, on the 16th of Feb at 45.14. And then it just came tumbling down under 30. I mean, that is 15 wow. points. Yep. And now look, it's above the 200 period and it's got a pattern that I wanted to discuss this morning actually a huge falling axe formation in the weekly chart. So let me do this. I want to go to Jets, which is the U.S. airline. Can you hold on? Oh, sure. Great. So, uh, so we, we're going to be looking at uh, Delta. We're looking at Jets. We're looking at American Airlines. We'll be right back with Fred. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, just before I get, uh, get back to Craig, uh, a question of the dead was... Um, about the WFC that spells for a two-minute live chart thoughts. Yeah, look how it stopped dead in the 200 feet moving at a peak B. So watch carefully because if Del if uh, Wells Fargo breaks, it uh, closes under, four, it's a 46.66. If it closes under 40, I'd say 46.26, there's a chance that the nine period will move down and, and be negative. You want to see by, what's the time now? Uh, at 10.42, you want to see by about 10.45, a test of 47.21. All right, let's get back to Greg. So this is what I've been do doing during the break. Of course, I did a bunch of okay. things. And um, let me just get out of this because there was a question about silver as well, SLV. So this is almost the same pattern. We just had a cup formation starting to break to the upside. So that's looking good. Now let's get back. So what we're looking at is JETS, which is the U.S. JETS is the U.S. Uh, Global JETS ETF. So the most important thing is it made a low just under 17, around about March the 7th. And then it screams and it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, a little D, stops at the 50 period moving average, pulls back. Then the pink goes green. So the nine period moving average goes green and it goes to a peak E and it stalls with a whole bunch of doji candles right on the 200 period moving average and then pulls back. So the pattern that I was talking about just a moment ago is applicable here. This is the Chapway falling axe formation. It runs up, gets to a D or an E, and then it pulls back with lower highs and much lower lows. Then it starts to form a base and it doesn't look exactly the same. I wish I could make a template, a plastic one that I could just put as a cover all over that I could just slide it along. Anyway, it makes a cup and it, it breaks above the declining, upper declining trend line. And that says you could get a test of the, pre the previous major high in the same angle and the same duration. This one just did it with this big gap today. It went above the 200 period moving average. It's stuck at 21.92. But now, what do I call it? Well, I'm always very conservative about this because the MACD has the M-shaped pattern. The stochastic is still weak. The unbalanced volume is, is rallying. It's okay. It's not great. And the 200 period moving average, which was incredible uh, resistance, then support back in February, and then just completely broke down. This is the first time we've revisited it. This is the second time, actually, in about two and a half weeks. It, I'm going to call this an F. So I haven't yet even given an alternate count, F slash A. I don't need to. I want to give it two or three days. But now I look at the weekly. Here's this long down uh, falling X formation. Lower highs, much lower lows. It's been like in a channel for ages. But this is the first time that we've seen the sharp on balance volume spiral to the upside with a move that is is in the generic, that is the ETF that includes Delta, includes, um, I'm sure it includes JetBlue, it includes um, uh, 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 American Airlines. So what mm -hmm. I am looking at here is if I look at the weekly, the monthly chart, remember, I, I make a big deal about how useless this flag pattern is.
the diamond, when you're coming into to the to the uh, midpoint of the diamond uh, or the apex, people say, "Oh my God! If you break to the downside, it can collapse. If you go to the upside, I just say no. It's just a diamond. All that will happen is either it's going to make a dreaded H pattern or it'll start to form another cup. Well." It's hugging right now the 14 and 9 period moving averages. So that's just saying to me, this is the start of an attempt in the airline sector to not only go against the general downtrend of the market, but to actually show a little bit of leadership action. And within that, if we go, I mean, JetBlue's had some horrible, um, certainly in the Boston area, just terrible stuff going on. They have just messed everything up. It was a fantastic airline. I used to love it. But now evidently they're, 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 you know, they're short of people and all sorts of things. So I'm going to go back to American Airlines. That was your question. And what I am going to say is, for the moment, I'm going to call it G. I, now, the big question is this. Are you in this position? I, I must. Uh, did you say that you were in it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, I am. So you it's, have a prof, you have a profit at this particular point. I I, I was in at sixteen fifty. So yeah, I have, I have. I'm so good. you see that 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 to me is really that's the when people ask me though they say you know we know that you really like to get the turns you like to get the market lows the market highs you like to get stocks right at the and then every once in a while. You get something in a D like we just got the other day, which still worked out fantastically because D where you, is where you got to be uh, a, a bit careful. And then my answer is, I try to look at the conditions, and that's how I make my decision. So if you get in correctly, I would not touch this position that you got in in the 16s. What I would say to you is, if we can get through this weekend. And by Tuesday of next, no, let's make it all the way of next week. If all of next mm -hmm. week, American Airlines has a bit of a pullback and it goes to, it's a 1917, it pulls back a dollar, but it holds the 200 period exponential moving average of 18.18 .18 in the daily chart. And yeah. in the weekly chart, it's had, you're moving sideways. So even going sideways should take you out of this down inside track repellent zone because you want it now to become a propellant zone if at any point it's is able to not break under I, i'm talking about a close a close under 18.42 18.38 instead today's high of 19.49 it actually i think it doesn't have to hold it has to have one attempt to get to 19.70s just anywhere there and then it can pull okay. back but it has to show that it has follow through upside action. To me, that'll say, you know what? I think this is not a G, but it's a G slash B. I don't know if you saw this, but did you see the little, the little, uh, the little ictus, the little peak right here? So it goes from yeah. peak F at 1857 on the 5th of April. Over the 200 period moving average for five sessions, it goes over it, and then it closes well under it, slides down, doesn't go pink in the nine period moving average. It's still very positive, but the low that was made on the seventh at 16.37 had an inside day the next day, another one the next day, except that that high was higher than the day before, 1702 to 1723, and the next day was lower. So that says to me, this is a gray peak. It was a great lesson. What a nice lesson. This is a gray A. Whoops, I keep writing the wrong, typing the wrong thing. Gray A. It's really a grade B, but it's a blue G. In other words, it's rallied, it's done very well, it's even holding now. This is about the time, 10 o'clock to 10.20 to 10.40 on any big gap that occurs. Usually this is when you start to see the give back. I like what I'm seeing here, and I'm just going to suggest that your entry point at 16, the most the important aspect is this 200 period moving average. Let me just draw this across and you'll see how important it is for it to start closing above. Look, the high that was made back in January at about 19.10 or so, peak E, it plummets, it comes back down, it goes to peak A, peak B, peak C minus because it couldn't hold over the 200 period moving average and tumbled down to the 12s. And now it's doing well, it's trying to turn this into a positive. I like what you've done. And you know what? I'm just going to say, usually I'd say take a little bit off. I'm saying keep your position. 
And okay. on Monday, I'm, I'm going to do some more on this. I like it very much. Thank Thanks, you for calling. Congratulations time. on your entry point, Greg. Thank, thank you, guys. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. You too. Sharpening thank your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. In this session, I'm just going to run through a bunch of things. Last night in the webinar, I had a question about Amazon. I said Amazon's stuck in a range, and I think it's going to be stuck in a range for at least, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's maybe another four to six weeks or more. Um, most importantly, uh, it, it has to hold 2,500 at any point. There's a 3,062. There was some good news. It's still down 48. I, I think it just, it's been a spectacular win. There's this widening um, uh, the higher highs and higher lows. I'm sorry, lower lows. This is an expanding wedge formation. Not one of my favorites. But most importantly, I just think it's stuck. So if you're in for the long term, this is a fantastic company. I'm not going to do anything. I'd just say, I, I would take a little bit off. If you haven't taken anything off right now, you'll, I'm sure you'll be able to put it uh, back about 10 or 15 percent lower at some point. That's OK. That's Amazon just stuck in a range. Good company stuck in a range. I did Exxon. I did Dell. And that was what I had to do. Um, um, HIMX in the den. I don't touch this. We did had fantastic gains on HIMX technologies a long time ago. I have not looked at it all. It's in the area of it needs chips, et cetera. It's, just, it's broken the major long-term sideways uh, rectangle formation is trading at 922. I, 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 I wouldn't be touching it. EEM was a question. Uh, EEM and EP, uh, EPV. Shorting EPV is the, what is that? 
Uh, EPV is the short side of shorting the EEM. All I'm going to say is the EEM, Europe, this, I'm sorry, the emerging market ETF, uh, I just don't see very much there. It broke to the downside, just like the TLT has just broken its key support level in a major long-term down channel. This is not a good sign. So I'm just going to say I do agree looking at the short side of EEM, but um, uh, I just give you the parameters. If EEM at, by Wednesday of next week is over 4580, let's call it 4620, then you've got to be careful. But at this particular point, it is very weak. Folks, have a great weekend and, and see, uh, happy, happy Easter, happy uh, Passover. And uh, there is still time to get my webinars. I should be up today and that'll be